guys, I am Chris and welcome to a new video. In today's video, we will be counting down the top 5 British sitcoms. Now obviously guys, this is my personal choice, this is my opinion. You know, people find different things funny and you know, I've gone with what I find funny. This is my sort of humour. Uh, there's, there's a variation in there, it ranges from a lot of the old sitcoms to obviously some of the more up to date current stuff. Um, so I really hope you like my list, and obviously in the comment section down below, uh, how about you post your top five sitcoms, and you know we can have a little discussion about it. Right, be before we get into the, the main top five, there is a few honourable mentions. First of all, there's one that is in this list, which probably a lot of people think is in this list because it's in a lot of people's lists, and that is the In Betweeners. And don't get me wrong, I love the In Betweeners like everybody else. But, yeah, it is very, very rude, and as much as I think, obviously, that's, that's, that, that's what makes it funny, um, it's not, like, particularly my type of humour. I like, I like some of it, but sometimes I go a little bit overboard, and, you know, uh, it's not really my sort of thing, I mean, in, in some ways. I do love it, but sometimes it's a bit, you know, it's not really my sort of thing. Uh, another one is Fresh Meat. I absolutely love, I absolutely love Fresh Meat. It's obviously got Jack Whitehall and Joe Thomas from in between us in it. And also one more honourable mention is Uncle. And the reason like this isn't actually the, the reason this one didn't make it onto the top five is because I haven't watched enough of it. I think I've only watched like two episodes so far. I'm getting into it. I really I, I love it, but I can't put it on this because I know I haven't really watched enough. But I, I do like that sort of style. It's uh, it's a bit dark in places as well, and it's, it, it balances the the uh, emotion with the uh, the comedy really well. But we are going to be getting into the top five right now, so I really hope you enjoy this video, and let's get started. So, coming in at number five, uh, we have a pretty classic one here in 40 Towers. Obviously, we have uh, John Cleese, who plays Basil Forty, and, and, and it's basically it's basically like the hotel from hell. There's always something going wrong in there, and it's up to old Basil Forty to try and fix it, and most of the time he doesn't. One of the most memorable episodes is the Germans, and oh my god, like, if that sort of stuff was done now, it would, you know, they'd probably BBC would most likely get sued. I mean, some of the stuff in it is actually really offensive, but looking back on it, and obviously being with, like, you know, 70s, 80s, uh, British sitcoms, you know, you can just, like, let it slide. I mean, I, I, I personally think it's, like, like hilarious. Like, John Cleese, uh, that's what he keeps on mentioning and mentioning the war, because he has some German guests, like, staying at the hotel. Like, he keeps saying to himself, mustn't mention the war. And he keeps on doing it. Basically, like, he's got... Like a head concussion, so he, oh, it's, it's hilarious. Another really funny like aspect of this uh, show is the Spanish hotel assistant Manuel. Honestly, he just he, he doesn't know any English pretty much. He interprets he, he interprets what people say the wrong way. He thinks he's they, they're saying something completely different, and it's a very good combination on screen. And I I, I love it. It's, it's just it's so it's such a clever idea. Okay, moving into number four. Uh, this probably isn't on many people's top list. But it's on my one just for like certain reasons. It's, again, it's my sort of humour. I like it, and it is not going out. And the main reason behind just this this, this beyond list is just Lee Mack alone. I think Lee Mack is one of the most talented uh, comedians out there. I, re I I like the stuff he writes, and I also find him really funny as a person in general. I also I like him on uh, Would I Lie to You. I think he just makes that show. But I really like the thoughts, the, the, the thought process. I really like. His creative mind because I really like not going out. It, it feels like the perfect family sitcom in my opinion. It balances things really well. It's got it's, it's not rude in the sense, but you know it's got an element like if you know you know sort of thing. Like a lot of them try and do, and it's one of them ones I think it does. You know it does really it does it does that really well. And uh, even even supporting cast like the the wife and the children and they they work really well. And um, you know you've got Tim Vine some of them as well, and you know the, the guy from. Uh, outnumbered. I don't know what his name. I can't remember what his name is. The guy from Outnumbered, uh, the dad in it. He's in that as well. Yeah, it, yeah. Again, it's a good like cast of people, and it's uh, a really just uh, it's, a, it's a fun show in my opinion. Okay, coming in at number three, it is a it, it's a really like different spin on the sitcom series. It's it stands out a lot above like nearly like most. It, it stands above most of them. It's really like, iconic in my opinion, and that is People Just Do Nothing. And obviously, we've got like. Uh, We've got Grinder, we've got DJ Beats, we've got DJ Steve's, and we've got your buddy G, um, among other characters. But honestly, the chemistry these people have on screen is it, it's it's amazing. It's so good. Obviously, all of them are off the nut, you know. 
uh, obviously smoking pot. It's, it's a really funny dynamic. You've got your buddies, the Ian the salesman, who basically, now basically he he can do anything sort of thing. He has his own internet cafe at one point. He has his own warehouse with it, like he's made his own nightclub in there. Uh, there's one episode where he goes and um, paints uh, the bedroom of DJ Beats's new uh, child. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, he goes and paints their room, and he just oh, he just wrecks it. It's horrible. And you, yeah, you, and you've got DJ uh, DJ Steve's as well. Uh, he's just complete. He's, he's, he's a complete fruitcake. Like he doesn't know where he is half the time, and it just makes for a really funny performance on screen. And it's really, it's really funny to know that the characters they play are completely different from how they are in real life as well. Because uh, I think they broke out of character once on one interview, and uh, you, you see it. It's just a, you see him in a different light. Like the the, the the dumb one, Steve. He's he's the one that writes it all, and uh, it's it's this really cool. And I, I, it's a really cool and current idea for a, a sitcom. It's just um, like it's, it's done differently. Where you have like they they break the fourth wall a lot. So, you know they, they talk to the camera quite a bit. Uh, like there's a bit where they are uh, like in in between the funny parts. You know you have like one of the characters like narrating over it, and they're like they're talking to the camera crew about. So they're like kind of documenting their life as well in in, in ways. You know like the reason I've chosen these shows is because I generally love them sort of thing. But on the whole sort of thing. So coming in at number two, we have Friday Night Dinner, and uh, you know there's a lot of episodes which are very hit and miss. I will say, but on the whole, I really do like the whole the format. Like, you know, the, the two children, yeah, they go around uh, their family's uh, house like every week, once a week, Friday night dinner. And um, it's just, you've got the dad in there. It's just like a, like a generic, like, British family. A uh, British, like, common, let's say, family as well, because you've got the dad who just, like, he's, he's so like, unhygienic. He, like, he, like, when you go around there, he's always, like, not wearing a top. He's always, like, eating out of the bin, eating the ketchup out of the pot. Um, he, he's, he's sneezing all over the place. And he, he's very like old-fashioned, like laid back as well, sort of thing. And also, he's deaf as well, which makes a really funny dynamic on screen because, well, like so the other characters can be having a conversation, and he's just out, he's his own little world. He just doesn't really know what's happening because he can't hear them. Um, and then you've got uh, a crazy neighbour who keeps going around there, Jim, and he's got a dog, and he's always scared of his own dog. Uh, oh my god, his his scenes like normally kind of make the episode sort of thing. Uh, one of my favourite episodes is what they go through a funeral and um oh my god they end up dropping the coffin it's just it's just it's just one bad thing after another and it's just it's, it's, it's you've got to watch it. you probably have watched it so um anyway on to the final one you know, i wonder what uh, this could be for the last one i wonder what it is hmm uh what could it be now, people that know me very well would, would actually have known from the start which one I'm going for as number one. And I think, like, most of the British public should really... This should be their favourite. I mean, probably, like, people have different opinions, but this... Like, the majority of the British public would probably put this as a number one. And it's just... You can't argue with it. Only Fools and Horses. You've got David Jason, Nicholas Lyndhurst. Uh, you've got uh, Roger Lloyd Pack, who sadly passed away, as well as Leonard Pierce. Um... Buster Merrifield, they've all passed away. Most of them passed away now, it's really sad. But, oh my god, there's so many episodes of Only Rules and Orders. I will say it again, just like most series, there's still ones which I don't like that much. But, I just, it's so good. Their chemistry on screen is perfect. Like, even from episode one, like, these three individuals, they've been chucked together. But they do an amazing, amazing job. But it just gradually gets better through the series. You've got so many memorable ones as well it's just hard you, you can't count on your hand how many good episodes there are um they have the special where they go down to margate which is actually local to me because i live in ramsgate which is the town next to margate like just people that don't know the area and uh, that's why i think early falls noise is kind of like sticks out for me because like they filmed like an episode down in this way down this way and it's, it's really nice to know like this area is part of the british sitcom history also there's other episodes such as when they have uh, they they buy some dolls and they don't realise they're actually like blow up inflatable dolls if you know what I mean and um, they end up exploding. This is very funny. Uh, the, 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 you have the iconic scene where uh, Dave Jason or Del Boy is leaning on the bar. The bartender uh, opens up the hatch to quickly go and do something, and David Jason leans back on the bar, thinking it's still there, and he falls straight through. And oh my god, this. There's so many episodes, like, like the, the one with the chandelier falls down and smashes. There's too many to count, but 
that is my favourite sitcom of all time because I know it, I, I know it kind of like off by heart. I know it for, like a lot. Of, some of it I know for word from word to, word for word. And um, so yeah, that is my number one sitcom. I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Um, I know I'm sorry if your favourite wasn't on there or if uh, I've done the list in a different way to you would like it. But this is my list. This is like what I find funny. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't put in between us on there. I mean, I, if I had more space on the list, I would have. And it's still in my mentions. And I still love it. All these shows I mention, I laugh and they're really funny. But I have ones I prefer more than others, if that makes sense to you guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I have been Chris as always. Make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you next time. Peace.